I think we better get on with it now. I think we, we should. Got all that through to get through. Shall we have our first guest? Let's meet our first studio guest, who has been waiting very patiently here to uh, to tell us all about something very exciting. Now, this is Steve Baxter from Forbes Baxter Associates in Telford. Steve, you're giving us a bit of an exclusive today, aren't you? Which we're very, very grateful for. Yes, this is a uh, business survey that I uh, con or had conducted just at the end of last year. Uh, results came in just before Christmas. Um, it's very lucky, really, because um, I found out on a um, networking event with the Federation of Small Businesses that Telford and Reekin Council were doing business grants. Uh, lucky to find that out. I applied, and I won the grant to do this research. Um, it was fantastic. It was, it was well run as well, because it was one of those things you have to pay before they'll give you the money back for the grant. So I had nightmares of cash flow problems and then paying in months, and they paid in six days. So it was a really great... Um, grant system from uh, from Telford and Rican Council. So Excellent. Hats off to them. So before we talk a bit about the survey itself, mm. just tell us a little bit about you and your business. Okay, so I'm a marketing consultant, almost all uh, business to business marketing. Uh, uh, marketing. Um, I come from a background dealing with an awful lot of uh, industrial uh, and technological marketing. I've been set up for about two years now and you know things have been picking up generally over the last few years. It's strange you know, setting up in the middle of, or the beginning of COVID, mm. not an ideal time to set up any kind of business, um, but it's been good, it's really interesting. And you're based in Telford, aren't you? So based in uh, Telford, so yep, so I've got office space in um, the Innovation Centre at the University of Wolverhampton, Telford campus, which is very convenient for me because I just live around the corner as well. Which is handy, isn't it? It, it, so it, it is nice to be able to walk or cycle to work sometimes, it just makes you feel a little bit healthier. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, now the survey itself, is a look very much, isn't it, at, uh, I mean, business attitudes as a whole, but specifically business attitudes towards how they market and promote what they do, isn't it? Yes. I mean, to, to understand any business trying to sell to another business, you've got to know about what they want from you, but also their business priorities as well, um, because that tells you how to frame your proposal to them. So I deliberately wanted the survey company to ask about business priorities as well as marketing priorities. We've got a good balance yeah. uh, between them and I wanted them to talk to managing directors, CEOs, as well as the marketing people because in the Shropshire community, quite often you're not going to get a decision just from a marketing manager, it also has to go to the MD as well. Yeah. So it's, it's important to know what all of those key people are thinking. So what was the brief in terms of who you chose to talk to? Is it, was it a geographical brief? Was it, it cross sectors? It's SMEs basically. Isn't it, it was SMEs and it was particularly Shropshire, which again, Shropshire's mainly an SME community mm. anyway. Um, so I think there were 13 from ONS data, mm. Office of National Statistics data. There were about 1,300 businesses that fit in that. It was turnover from 1 million up to 50 million. And we subdivided that for the one to five million, that what I'd call the small businesses, and then the five to 50 million businesses as well. Because it's quite interesting when you look at the data, there's significant differences between the way those two types of organisation feel. That's one of the things I think, mm. I don't know about you, Chris, I thought was most interesting about some of your findings. We've picked out, haven't we, four particular slides yep. to talk through today. Let's have a look at the first one, shall we? So the first, the first one is about key challenges that your company is yeah. facing, isn't it? So, and here, this is the one of the ones where there is the biggest difference between the small and medium, isn't there? There's quite a few differences, yes. Um, so this was uh, questions asked to MD CEOs, so, so the bosses of the business rather than the marketing people. And it was, what are your key challenges at the moment? And it probably comes as no surprise, their top challenge for the business, so not for marketing, was staff and skills shortages. And I think probably if we've been awake for the last two years, we know why that is. It's yep. a combination of COVID and it's a combination of, of uh, Brexit with that. And hopefully that's something we'll just learn to live with. So if we repeat this next year, it might still be a concern, mm. but hopefully it won't be the top challenge. And I think from there, you can see on that chart, there are two other related uh, issues there as well. So supply chain problems, again, bound to be caused by um, uh, COVID and Brexit. And then Linked to that a little bit, problems with exporting. It's less of a problem for the smaller businesses because I imagine they're local and national, so they're not doing exporting. But it's a big problem for, for, the, um, for the bigger businesses, and that's bound to be COVID and, and Brexit related. Mm. From, from the findings on this particular chart mm. then, which, which bits in there did you find most surprising or most eye-opening? Mm. Um, 
I was going to say, from, from my perspective, one of the things I found concerning was the uh, quite low score for understanding markets and customers. Because it's one of those things in business, I think, we all assume we know our markets. And assumptions can really kill you. I mean, an example from my own past, I, I, when I started working for a business in West Brom, um, we had this product that was all about lubricating or, or keeping lubrication systems working on big trucks. And so I was told, we've got to sell this to quarry companies. Because think of it, contaminated environment, they've got to keep those lorries working 24 hours a day. We couldn't sell it to them. Because when we researched it afterwards, we found out that the quarry owners didn't actually care that much about the lorries because they had research and maintenance companies to do all that. It was their responsibility. If we'd done the research first, then we'd have found out we were targeting the wrong people. So it does concern me that people f assume they know their markets because quite often it turns out that we don't know them anywhere near as well as we think, which is why I was pleased to be able to do the research so I can find out about my customers. I mean, being able to take a step outside of your own business and look back at it through the window is one of the most important things to do for any business, isn't it? It's it is. It's that lovely expression that you can't read the label from inside the jar. Mm. Yeah. Um, you, as soon as, you know, I've heard someone say, as soon as you work for a company, your opinion on that company becomes worthless. Mm. You've got to be outside looking in and you've got to do research one way mm. or another. Absolutely. I feel like Chris Whitty now. Next slide, please. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one, shall we? So, uh, go on. Talk us through this one. So, we asked a similar question then, key challenges, but this time we were talking to the marketing people and asking them, well, what are your key marketing challenges? And I think any MD in an organisation would be pleased to see they put increasing sales and revenue top of the list um, because quite often marketing people like these arcane metrics that mean nothing to a business. So, they'll be pleased to see sales and revenue there. Um, but again, this is one where there's a very big difference between small businesses and larger um, and medium-sized businesses. And the one that stood out for me was promoting and marketing your brand, where strangely, smaller businesses were far more concerned than medium-sized businesses. And I think that comes about because of a, a misunderstanding of what a strong brand can do for them. They start thinking, if we want a strong brand, we've got to have an attractive logo that everybody's going to recognise. But actually, a strong brand will help a small business. To get a strong brand, they, do, they need what I would say the, the three X's. First of all, experience. How do people feel about the way they dealt with you when they bought from you, when they wanted after-sales service, etc.? How good are your products and services? Second X would be expectation. How do people think? they're going to feel when they deal with you in the future, which could come from experience or it could come from your reputation. And the third X would be um, expression. How do they talk about it? And that's what is, builds a strong brand for a small business. So a small business who's concerned about promoting their brand, they're probably thinking, this is something that's going to cost me a fortune because I've got to get my logo in front of everybody's eyes. Is that what they should be concentrating on more is getting those internal things sorted because that will bring, br uh, build a strong brand for them. And, and conversely, does it also mean that maybe with some of the medium-sized businesses, the reason they're less concerned about this is because they think they're already there? They've already got their brand, they're already... They probably do. They've probably done a rebrand exercise at some point. They've probably got a shiny new logo and that might be making them a little mm. bit complacent about what brand building is actually all about for them. Yeah. One of the things I thought was most interesting on this chart as well is the fact is looking at um, one of the challenges being demonstrating the value of marketing, <laughs> the, the scepticism towards marketing and or the understanding of it. I suppose. Yeah, there is, and uh, you know we we could take up the entire show on that. It, it, marketing is, uh, I mean, I love it obviously, but it is a profession that has a lot of unqualified and uncertified people in it. You know, it's one of those situations there, you'll make someone your marketing executive if they've got a nice Facebook following on their personal page or they can write a paragraph and understand the difference between TO, TOO and TWO. Oh. Therefore, you're automatically the marketing person. Um, it doesn't make you a marketing person at all. And that you know, reflects something in one of the later slides we'll come mm. on to. People are very sceptical mm. skeptical about the, the value of marketing because you know, you couldn't be a lawyer without a law degree and going to law school, mm -hmm. but it seems anyone can call themselves a marketer. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I know we'd argue because we are broadly in the publicity and communication yeah. business yeah. anyway. But but you know, there's there's a definite link. You know, a good marketing team is always going to have to have an eye on 
sales and revenue of a business because they know that somebody is going to be down the line wanting to connect one the well, impact of one to the other, aren't they? They should do, absolutely. But marketing nowadays has become very focused on communication and just promotion. You know, mm. it, you may have heard the term the four Ps. Well, promotion is just one of those Ps, mm. and the four Ps as a whole are just tactics, not strategy. That was too detailed, mm. I apologise. But when we focus on those, we tend to just look at these arcane marketing metrics. You know, how many likes are you getting? What's mm. your conversion rate on your website? And that kind of thing. And that doesn't necessarily translate into the pound notes that you need to put mm. into the business. Yeah. No, absolutely. Now this next slide, which I, I mean, I like these, you know, because I think these focus people's minds, don't they, where we say, right, yeah. here's a pot of money, here's a pot of yep. cash, you've won the lottery, <laughs> how do you spend it? What would you want to do? Yeah. So just talk us through the objectives of this well, one. Well, I, I love this one because 10,000 pound, it's, you know, it's a sizable chunk of cash. It's not a fortune, but you can do a decent ma uh, a marketing project with 10,000 pounds. So. I asked the survey company to put this question, first of all, to the MDs. And this one really made me chuckle. Because if you look at the orange bars, the medium-sized businesses, they, five want, to lot, 50, they right? want to do everything. They want everything so, uh, yeah. so their challenge is not going to be, well, their challenge is going to be prioritization. Mm. They just want to do the lot. Um, but then when you look at the small companies, staff recruitment, staff training, mm -hmm. that's way up there. Um, but obviously, from my perspective as a marketing consultant, it's really interesting to see sales and marketing activities the least popular option, despite the fact, if you think back to the first slide, increasing sales and revenue was the second highest priority. Yeah. And so that comes back, I think, to confidence. They sit there and they think, I've got £10,000 to spend. Mm -hmm. Should I get in a sales or marketing consultant? No, they don't think that because they think they're not going to get value out of it mm. because there are so many unqualified, uncertified people mm -hmm. in marketing. Well, more than, according to that, the survey results, and more than 50% of small businesses take that attitude. Yep. That yeah. yep. For whatever reason, they, yep. they wouldn't spend anything on marketing their business. I'm not sure it says they wouldn't spend anything, but they certainly wouldn't spend £10,000 on it yeah. Um, yeah. If, if they had that kind of money. And that, it, you know, that is a concern. It's not as much a concern for me. Luckily, I am certified and qualified. Mm -hmm. But it is a concern for the industry as a whole that, you know, marketing has this low reputation. And... As long as we allow ourselves to be, if you like, pigeonholed as the colouring in department, that's going to mm. continue. Mm. I know Chris is particularly interested in this yeah. final slide, aren't you? Because this is this is the one where, okay, you've got to spend yeah. your ten thousand pounds on marketing. Yeah. So, how do you do it, and how do you carve up the pie? So yeah, this this is the one that, in many ways, scares the hell out of me. Um, so, this is asking the marketing managers what they would do. They've got ten thousand pounds left in their budget, and their top answer is that first one on the list, yeah. social media or online advertising. And with hindsight, I should have separated those two in the survey, but that's hindsight talking. So online advertising, I worry about a lot because ad fraud is rife in programmatic. That's the, that's the automatic online advertising. Uh, we won't go into a massive detail now, but there's a guy called Bob Hoffman that people should uh, follow if they want more details. He's, he's also known as the ad contrarian. <laughs> And data from 2021, recent data, shows that about 140 billion, not million, billion dollars was lost in ad fraud. That's about 70% of the advertising spend on programmatic advertising. And basically, what he's saying by that is 70% of the adverts are not going to websites and being sh seen by human eye. They're going to websites and being seen by bots. And these are on websites that have been set up specifically to capture advertising visits from these bots. Um, and it's a massive problem. And no one wants to talk about it, no. funnily enough. Um, so it, it, it is a big problem. In America, legislators are taking a bit more interest. It's starting to get traction in the European Union, although that doesn't particularly affect us anymore. Yeah. Um, but hopefully it will be cured in some way but it's a massive problem it's just when i saw that figure and you think oh. wow you know, I know that is a lot i mean obviously we, we deal with local advertising don't we so mm. people who advertise with us locally it's just on the shropshire business website or shropshire lives website but you know obviously we're talking larger companies as well that are spending millions aren't we on this exactly and we're talking about the programmatic stuff mm. so if i place an advert with you yeah. i know where that advert's going to yes. go if i place an advert through Google, I've got a better con uh, control. Mm. It's the programmatic systems where you book 
advertising, you don't know where it's going to be, your advert's going to appear. Those are the systems that have such a problem with ad fraud. And does that work as well on like, you know, this, this cost per click as well, where mm -hmm. someone might be doing a bidding and say you're paying £16 per click or something like mm -hmm. that. Is, is that something that similar with that? That would more likely, there's lots of systems that mm. do that, that would more likely be Google Ads where mm. you're a little bit safer there. Right, um, okay. So I wouldn't be so, so concerned about that. Yeah. It's it is a big, a big company problem, yeah. really, uh, because they're normally de uh, companies with, with bigger advertising mm. budgets who use this programmatic advertising. Yeah. Do you think there's a relation between the fact that, as you said earlier, in some cases, some companies think anybody can do marketing mm. and you don't have to have a marketing qualification. So you've got someone who's maybe not perfectly qualified for marketing mm. running a budget when you know they, they're not maybe particularly aware of some mm. of the finer points of some of the... It's a good it. question. I don't know the answer. I would hope that someone with a budget, you know, if they're, if they're running a big advertising budget, I would hope they're expert. But there's, there's an awful lot of head in the sand about this, mm. there's no doubt about that, that people don't want to know um, that there's a problem. They don't want to acknowledge, because at the end of the day, everyone in the job has to prove their worth to their boss. Mm. So they want to turn around at the end of their year and say, these are the results, these are the click-throughs I've got. And they possibly don't want to check whether it was a, a mm. real click-through or a robot. Yeah. I think there's some fascinating, fascinating stuff in here. What's it's going to happen yeah. to this report now, then, Steve? Now that you've done this, where's My it going to go? Who's going to see it? I'm going to publish it far, far and wide. Well, I mean, clearly everybody will see it today because they're all watching SPLTV. The entire but. world will see mm. it today, obviously. Um, but no, I mean, my business is definitely focused around Shropshire and the, and the West Midlands, so I'm just going to do publicity around this area um, with it. But it's you know, it's really useful for um, I think a lot of businesses because it's not. It does talk about business attitudes as well as marketing attitudes because I think it's just relevant on, on both of those points. Absolutely. Is, is this typical of the kind of work you do quite regularly then or this kind of project? Yeah, when I started I didn't think I'd be doing much on the research front but as I've gone through um, in the last two years there's more and more research going on because it's a bit, if you don't do research first it's a bit like advertising. You don't know if you're advertising the right thing to the right people in yeah. the right place. It, it's almost like, I mean, I'm nearly blind. If I take my glasses off and I've got a bow and arrow, yeah. not a good mixture, um, you know, I might be able to see there's a target out there somewhere, but my chances of hitting it will be absolutely zero. If I've got research, it's like putting your glasses back on and you can see the bullseye. And all of a sudden, you know you're presenting the right message to the right people yeah. at the right time in the right place. And that's where research comes into it. So I've been doing a lot more research projects on you know target markets and brand as well um, than I expected to be doing. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I can recommend very focals. I'd be lost without them uh, now. I have to say, so. Sad sign of age, isn't it? It is, really? I'm afraid. Yeah. It is, I'm afraid. Steve, thank you so much it is a pleasure. for coming in. And please do keep us updated with any, uh, any of your other research. Um, we love to share this kind of thing because it's just right. anything that shows us some trends of mm -hmm. you know, where we're going and attitudes yeah. in Shropshire. It's fabulous, and you know who knows where it can be useful to other people. That's the thing, isn't it? So Great if it is. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, it's time now for a quick break. We've got lots more news, views, and features coming up in a couple of minutes. <laughs>